What's up, everyone? Okay, before I start, welcome to everyone that's new here. I got 100,000 new <laughs> subscribers in the past 30 days, so I imagine that there's some new people on here. Uh, any of you that haven't seen my last couple videos, uh, I did a video with my son Dylan yesterday on Perfect Pitch. You should definitely check that out. It's talking about the different levels of per Perfect Pitch because there are different levels of Perfect Pitch. Um, and it's about ear training. I've got a new ear training course coming out by the end of the month that, um, that I'll be talking about more in future episodes. Uh, there's a discount code here for those of you that are new. Sorry about the autofocus there. It's because I moved my hands fast. What's, a, what's up, DJ Green Arrow? The discount code is RB100 and it's 30% off anything in my store. Now, this is how I afford to do videos for free. Um, it's actually, once again, the more popular my channel's gotten, the slower my store's gotten because I do, I've do. i done a lot of videos that don't necessarily have to do with the things that m most of the channel is about. This is really a learning channel, learning about all types of music, everything from film scoring to improvisation to music theory to, you know, what makes this song great, music production, recording techniques, everything and it's all free and I'm giving back because I have been fortunate enough to have run into some of the greatest musicians of all time and played with some of the greatest musicians of all time that um, you know and have gotten a world-class um, education thank you Stephen so much appreciate that so uh, you buying things in my store, if you buy a, a music theory mug that I have, that'll teach you the different names of all the modes, what the scale degrees are, all the different triads that I talk about. I talk about Lydian triads and sus4 triads and sus2 triads and Phrygian triads, and it gives you the formulas for all of them. Or you can buy a modal mug, which will teach you all the modes of the major scale, melodic minor scale, harmonic minor scale, harmonic major scale, and double harmonic major scale. And then I have the Beato book. Now this is my Beato book right here. This is the, an actual one that I printed. It comes only in PDF form, but you know, if you want to learn about, you know, anything having to do with music, basically anything with music theory, like what kind of scales and things you play over what chords and all that, everything is in here. This is a textbook. It's 461 pages of a textbook. I printed that out, like I said. But that is how you get the most out of this channel is to actually have the Beato book and you can follow along. So I'm going to talk about the quickest way to learn the fretboard. I'm going to teach you exactly how I learned it. And I learned it from a guy that lived two blocks away from me that happened to own a music store that I ran, randomly ran into because I was mowing, mowing the guy's lawn. His name was Tom Rizzo. This is back in the mid-70s. So... He owned a store called Rizzo's Music back in Rochester, New York. So my very first lesson with him, he said, okay, we're going to learn the guitar neck. I want you to remember these, remember these five positions, okay? So, all right. So we're going to start in G major. So, okay. He said, there's two elements to this. There's the, the outer structure of this, which is going to be pentatonic. And uh, oh, thank you, Tona, Tono, Tono City. Uh, there's the outer structure, which will be pentatonic, and then the inner structure is going to be modes or scales, but five positions, and it's going to be based off the five positions of the pentatonic scale. So we started here in G major, right? Uh, and we played... G major pentatonic. Now that pentatonic works on a G major chord. You know, it could be a straight G major. I just played a G6. Okay, and inside that scale is the G major. Is the G major scale, okay? The second position is based off the second position of the G major pentatonic scale, which is this. 
If I go back here, then you can see more even more easily how it works. But so move up to the second scale. Here's the pentatonic scale. Okay. Okay, so I'm here. Now this is not the cage system. This is really the scale system. Um, and out of this position, we play this fingering. But Tom would always have me continue on. Uh, Tyler, thank you so much. <laughs> That's a funny comment. So this... is really the Dorian scale, but it's all the notes that are contained within this. So he would have me go up and down each scale position. I'd go pentatonic first, then I'd do the, the position, the, the major scale finger in the position. So it'd be like this. go to the next position there you go. then I move up to the next position on B's that's the third note of the pentatonic scale and I would learn this pentatonic position all this is in my Beato book okay you might recognize it for an E minor chord so if you have an E minor chord or a G major chord, so if I play an E minor chord here, okay, so there's your, that's that position. Well, there's also a scale in this position. So here's the pentatonic scale. position here is off the fifth off the note D okay we're not even to the main position that most of you know but this is what we would call position uh, four if you're talking about G major right one two three four and it's this okay so it's off of D Okay, so that position, that could be used for a D major. And you can do the, then you do the scale notes from the G major scale here. Pentatonic. Um, somebody says pattern and position is confusing people. It's confusing you. Don't speak for everyone. Okay. When I say position uh, four, that's the fourth position. One, two, three, four. It's the fourth position of the pentatonic scale. And this is the fifth position. There's five notes in the scales. So that means that there are five patterns. Every scale... Uh, has the same number of patterns that it does note numbers. But because there are two half steps in this scale, two of the, two of the scales are really in the same position. You don't have to move. 
That's why it's easier to just memorize the five. I used to call it the five positions of the major scale, not the seven positions. Um, so this is uh, um, this was a far easier way to learn this and to master the fingerboard, okay? So then we get up to this position, and this is the position that you know. You usually call that position one of the minor pentatonic. And then the scale that's in this position is this. Uh, this would be your Aeolian scale. Well, I go up to this note. And the reason that Tom showed me this way is that if I did, because I did it out of the pentatonic scale positions, I learned where those extra notes were. So I always filled in those notes. Thank you so much, John. I always filled in the notes uh, in between the entire pentatonic position. This one starts here. So I, I finish the scale. So the last note of the scale could go up to here. Right? Okay, and then that's all you do, and you go to the next position. Next position. Okay, so those five positions of the pentatonic scale show you the outline of all the notes of the major scale. Um, that really is the quickest way to learn where all the notes are. And then you have where all the triads um, and seventh chords are in each position. That's the next thing that you learn. Now, there's all the... You know, it, it all depends on how completely you want to learn this. The way that I would learn this stuff is I would pick two chords and I would record it on a, you record it on a looper, I would record it on a cassette player because of when I learned. And I would go between, I'd take a key, let's say G major, and then maybe go to um, B flat major, something like that, right? So I'd go, I'd practice G major. And then I'd come down G major. Or I'm sorry, B flat major. So I'm going up G major. I did it that that way you can hear it better. I went up to the B flat. So G major. Okay, then I'd say, okay, what about B major and G major and E major? So I go to the closest position. I got to say, okay, where is E major near here? So I go like this. Okay, so I went up, I, I went up G major, I came down E major. I'm going to go up E major. I'm going to come down G major and go up E major. So I'm going to hit here and then go to this next note and begin in the next scale. So play it slow. Okay, so there, there's my transition. Thank you, John. Appreciate that. Um, Let's say you go between really, uh, uh, thank you, Evan, John, appreciate that. Um, so then if you try to go a tritone, okay, so a tritone would be go from G major to D flat major, okay?
Okay, so then, it's, then you got to start thinking, okay, well, what notes are in D flat major here? Okay, so. Then I'm going to go up here, and I'm going to find my D flat major. I could go this way. I could go like this. Okay, I came down D flat major. Let's see, Scott and Harwood. I don't play, but I enjoy learning from my videos. How, where do we start from scratch? That's where I would start, actually. I would literally start with those five positions of the pentatonic scale and then learn all the notes of the major scale to fill in there. Uh, the next thing you do is you learn the triads in those positions. I would start with one, four, five and learn those. So I would do uh, G major. <laughs> C major, D major, G major. Okay. These also work for bass. All of these work for bass. You just do the bottom four strings. All this stuff is in my Beato book. It's very simple to learn. Like I said, I learned the neck in three days and and uh and tom would just test me on it he'd have me uh play he'd say okay start in position one of the g major scale start in position three of the g major scale and i'd be like okay and then he'd tell me to go to a different scale okay and i'd say he'd say okay i want you to go to d major and i Okay, so I went from G major to D major, and this was allowed me to be able to change keys. It also allowed me to learn things. I remember um, uh, when Frampton Comes Alive came out, uh, when I was figuring out the solos, like on Do You Feel Like We Do, which was a huge song the first year I came that I played guitar. And Peter Frampton on the song Lines on My Face, there's some really sophisticated solo lines on it, and that, and Do You Feel, do you feel Like We Do. And I immediately learned when he did, he did some licks like this. So it's, um, uh, let's see. So when he would do these lines like that. So he's using the Dorian scale and he's using the blues scale. And I knew that because I knew that position. Okay. And I loved it because you combine the blues scale with the Dorian scale. I love that sound. Garcia did stuff like that. Uh, Dickie Betts and Dwayne Allman did stuff like that. So I'm got that pentatonic. Tom Schultz did that. Thank you, Phil. I appreciate that. But using that Dorian scale. Sean, thank you. Brian, thank you. Amazing. Bloomfield, too. All those guys did that. Terry Kath did that. They all combined those. They used that. Um, they used the minor blue scale. They used the major. And, the, and they used the mixolydian with that.
right and there you right Prince too there you go all of that is in there and by knowing those positions I knew the neck instantly one week I knew the neck I knew all the scales all I did was uh, was learn those five positions and then all the what we call the fill-in notes which happened to be the and he didn't teach me modes because he knew that modes are too confusing for a beginner so I immediately knew the neck I knew how to play in any key and switch to other keys but uh, I wasn't confused with modes. If, I, if he had thrown modes in there, I would have been, oh man, I don't know what this is. What are modes? I don't understand that. No, he just said, learn the five positions of the pentatonic scale and the five positions of the major scale. And that's it. He didn't say minor scale, nothing. And then once I uh, learned those five positions, then he added the blues note each time. Okay, so then I went through each uh, scale fingering and he added the blues note, the blue note. Okay, so it would be, um, uh, you know, obviously here. And I was like, okay, I got that. And then here. And I, as soon as I knew that, that flat five. PayPal's working on my site. Aaron, you want to help Rod out there? Uh. So all those... Right? Um... So all right... Gives you all the blues notes there. That way, as soon as I heard those kind of licks on piano or guitar, you know, then I knew where those things were. Thank you, Mike, so much. Appreciate that. So that's it. I mean, those are the that's the quickest way to learn the fingerboard right there is to take those five positions of the major scale, get then learn those, right? Each position. You can just start just with those. And then you do all the fill-in notes. so on and so forth. Um, there you go. HK said, check out my my video with Aaron on blues guitar licks with piano stuff. Yeah, I did a guitar, a piano licks, piano blues licks on, blues licks for piano on guitar. I did a video a long time ago, a few couple years ago. And I did that kind of stuff where... That's more like what you do on the piano. That's really what Wes Montgomery, those kind of things. I love that. That's up. But you got to know where they are. You got to know where those no notes are in order to do that, right? So it's not just, you know. I mean, really knowing how to get between those positions. And then eventually you start... 
And then I, then he would have me go and play between each position. So I'd go up one area of the guitar. And you'd see how long I could go without making a mistake, right? So. mistake there and then he'd make me start over you notice I use different fingerings there on that that's one thing that um, the reason I use that three one to go between the two positions. Okay, so that I would do that, uh, I would start combining the positions that way. Or, he also had me do that, which I thought was really, really great, right? So I play the, this position. And I would go, and I'd slide up to that, the note that is uh, the next note in that position. Then I go here, I go. Right? And that really, really helped me uh, work between the positions. Okay, Hummingbird, how does this apply with different drop tunings like drop D or drop B? Well, those are definitely different uh, things. You have to learn different positions for those. I don't suggest that. I say when you do drop D and, and drop B things, you have to, that's a completely different vo vocabulary. Um, that's why. I, I wouldn't, soloing in those things just kind of screws everything up. That's why you don't hear a lot of soloing. Well, typically people solo that have a drop D songs, for example, will solo. Thank you, Opelestu. Thank you so much. Is that how you say that? Um, typically you'll have one person that is playing in standard tuning or drop tuning, but with all the strings tuned uh, like a normal guitar. Um, and then you'll have your guy that will be playing your drop tuning if you're doing drop D or something like that. Yeah, if you have a drop D. If I'm playing, you know, Killing in the Name, and I'm playing my... I have to change my position like that, right? Then I'd be like would be there. So it's a little bit trickier. Um, anyways, tell all your friends about this. Subscribe to my Instagram. I'm trying to hit 100,000 followers on Instagram. I have a completely different um, Thing that I do on Instagram, I do even more guitar stuff. Uh, but follow me on Instagram at Rick Beato One. I have about seventy thousand followers. I'm trying to get to a hundred thousand. Thank you, Jacob. I appreciate that so much. I'm trying to get to a hundred thousand. And if I didn't thank everybody on here, I mean, all the these, all the 
Mike Downey, I mean, all these people here. Sean, I mean, thank you so much. Everybody here that donated. Jeff, you guys are the best. I appreciate that. How do you say that? Op opal stew? Opal stew? Um, that's it for today. I'll be at a million subscribers here pretty soon, I'd say. Um, but uh, I don't know if you guys noticed that are on the live stream or have been on the live streams lately. Now that I'm in my new room, I have a wired... Hey, Tom, I have a wired internet connection, and it's been green all this time. Um, so there you go. Never any interruption. I shouldn't say that. But uh, a million subscribers, I'm not sure what I'm going to do for a million when I get there. If, uh, if I'm going to, uh, sorry, my thing went out of focus. If uh, Thank you, Richard. Uh, first time of year, welcome, David. This is really great, but please follow me on Instagram. Trying to get to 100,000 on there. I want to get to 100,000 when I hit a million here, so I've got a few weeks or so to get there. So follow me there. You guys are the best. Beato book, discount code. Billy and Aaron are pasting things in here. William Jones, that's Billy. 30% off. I never do 30%. This is the fourth time I've done a 30% discount. RB100. Thank you, Steve. You guys are the best. All right, I'm out of here. My Instagram is rickbeato1. So follow me on Instagram. Everybody here, rickbeato1. Talk to you guys later. Thank you.